The leader of East Germany has been stripped of his power. The ouster ends 18 years of iron-fisted rule by Erich Honecker. The change comes as the government there grapples with growing demands for a freer society. Despite the change, the state news media says Honecker's replacement is likely to continue resistance to pro-democracy demands. The major case squad in Livingston County this morning confirmed that the bodies found in a barn yesterday are male. Yesterday, officers found three bodies buried, buried in shallow graves inside a barn on a farm near Ludlow. Neil Bryan owns the farm. Bryan says Ray Copeland has worked on his farm in the past. Both Ray and his wife, Faye, are being held on conspiracy to commit theft charges in connection with an alleged cattle theft. But authorities spent last week digging up their farm, apparently in search of bodies. Authorities say the bodies are badly decomposed, and forensics experts from Kansas City will examine them. Up next, meet a Pulitzer Prize-winning author after this. His last book was The Making of the Atomic Bomb, one of the most honored books in recent memory. In fact, it won the Pulitzer Prize. Now Richard Rhodes has turned his attention to the farm. Farm portrays the day-to-day -day lives of a Missouri farm family. It's a different picture of the American farm than the one we get in the news headlines. And Richard Rhodes got that view firsthand. You didn't just go interview farmers. No, I went out to live with a wonderful family of two people, two couple working together and their three children day by day and kept a close diary of how they lived. How long did you get out and actually do some work? And I was, yes, I got to drive their tractors and take their grain to market and all the things that they did. I was kind of an unpaid hired hand who wasn't very good at it, but, but could, could get a feeling for it that way. Someone would say, gee, you went from writing about the making of the atomic yes. bomb to the farm, but in many ways farming is as mysterious as nuclear physics it really is, is to most Americans. Yeah, technically it's very complicated work these days. This man was responsible for a thousand acres of land. He had huge machines that he did his work with. He had to be uh, responsible for the veterinary care of his animals and the soybean futures market. It's a very complex life and a fascinating life. And you dispel a lot of the myths and the stereotypes that a city folks <coughs> operate under, which is all the farmers are going bankrupt. Yes, right, exactly. They are, they are recovering. They're not necessarily getting rich. They never were, but they're doing better than they were before. Mm -hmm. And that all the farms are now owned by corporations. And there are, I think, fewer than 8,000 corporate farms in the whole United States because it's really not a very good investment. Mm -hmm. You have to love the life as these people do. Mm -hmm. Would you say this, is, is there such a thing as a typical farm family? Is this I one? think that the Bowers, as they're called in the book, are pretty close to typical in terms of how much land they farm in terms of the kind of wonderful, old-fashioned family people they are. Uh, I've met other farmers around them, and they all seem to share those old-fashioned characteristics. And now they're under fire from the consumers about using herbicides and pesticides, yes, yes. and they would rather not use them. They would rather not use them. The federal programs that they depend on to survive are structured so that they have to use them. And I think that's probably because it benefits chemical companies who have very powerful lobbies in Washington. If we want to change all that, we're going to have to encourage farmers to change and help them change. You're signing books this afternoon. Signing this books. is what you call a teaser because we had such a short amount of time yes. due to the news today. But tell signing where we books be. today at uh, Bennett Schneider from 1 to 3, at Don Martin's Bookstore in Lenexa from 4.30 to 5.30, and at Walden Books in Bannister Mall from 6.30 to 7.30. I'd be happy to see anybody. Okay. The book Great. is Farm, and if it's a... Something done by Richard Rhodes, you know, it's a, it's a fine work. Thank you very much. Thanks. We'll go live to San Francisco for an update on the earthquake before we close. Well, as we mentioned at the top of our program, crews today are trying to clean up the damage and search for bodies left behind by the deadliest earthquake to hit Northern California since 1906. Richard Ray of the CBS affiliate in Dallas is in California covering the quake. He joins us via live satellite from Los Gatos, which is 20 miles southwest of San Jose, near the epicenter. What's the scene in the aftermath of the quake, Richard? This little town's been hit very hard. It's a picturesque place of about 27,000 people, a very pricey place, we're told. There's a string of shops around about three blocks long here. Every one of them's been damaged seriously. Several are teetering and about to fall. The city's without power, and it's without water. Uh, despite that, there tends to be a, still pretty much of a laid-back attitude here. The serious shortage could be the water shortage if we have fires. But these kinds of situations, to a lesser degree, in a lot of southern Bay counties. 
Stan and Lily? Richard, uh, a lot of people here in Kansas City and across the country have friends and family in the area they haven't been able to get in touch with. How's phone service? And any word yet on when phone service will be restored? Actually, phone service is fairly, fairly good throughout the Bay Area. We, we know there are pockets where they're having trouble getting it out, but uh, uh, the lines tend to be jammed and busy because so many families are trying to call their loved ones elsewhere, but the phones are, for the most part, working. How much has day-to-day -day services been disrupted? Are any businesses open? I assume schools are all closed. Schools are closed, businesses are closed without power, without water, without that sort of thing. It's going to be, I'm told, 72 hours, for example, here before they get power and water back. I think we're going to have a very disrupted lifestyle out here for several days to come. Richard, one of the things that we have not heard mentioned here is the BART system, the, uh, the subway system in San Francisco. Was that terribly disrupted as well? Well, the freeway system's a shambles, of course. Uh, Darty, uh, BART is running uh, uh, reduced schedules. Of course, I, I can't give you details on that, but there is some mass transit going. The freeways, however, are, are a mess because so many of them are closed and damaged. Richard Ray in Los Gatos, California. Thanks a lot for joining us. That's today's show. Here again as a look at the forecast. Partly sunny and cool today. We'll have a high of 40 to 45. Tonight will be partly cloudy. It's going to be very cold, a low in the mid to upper 20s. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, continued cold, a high around 40. Coming up on your local news at 5, professors and students at the Geological Survey at the University of Kansas are using this earthquake as a learning tool. We'll have a report. And on tomorrow's noon edition, all aboard for a ride on a model train. And Dr. Bowen White with more health tips. For Lily and Kansas City's news team, I'm Stan Carmack. So long. Afternoons on KCTV 5 are full of love, laughs, and the law. At 3, it's Love Connection, followed at 3.30 by Third Degree. And at 4, it's The People's Court. It all starts at 3, weekdays here on TV5.